In this video, we're going to use the web interface to model some lower WAN gateways, specifically uh, helium miners, which have been extremely popular on the service recently, and for good reason, because there's, uh, there's a lot of use cases for these. So starting with the settings on the left, uh, we need to punch in the relevant settings for our region. So we're in the US, so we're FCC rules 915 megahertz for the frequency, and 0.5 watts or 27 dBm for the power output. I want to put an argument to bed about um, height versus antenna gain because there's a lot of uh, misconceptions in the community uh, judging by the same questions on Reddit every single day about antennas, which antenna should I buy? Uh, don't buy any of them is my recommendation. Uh, just use the stock one. You'll see why. So we're going to start uh, six foot off the deck here in Brooklyn uh, with a stock antenna. So I've put in a uh, frequency here, um, RF power, um, half a watt. Uh, don't worry about the feeder um, antenna. It's a dipole, it's vertically polarized, and it's got the stock gain there. Okay, the receiver threshold is an area where a lot of novices are making, mis making a mistake. Um, Lower WAN has a theoretical threshold of uh, minus 140 and the, uh, the reason we don't use minus 140 is we're in a city, we're not on top of a mountain. If we were on the top of a mountain then we might be able to get away with using that. So I'm going to immediately bring that down, I'm going to put in some man-made noise as a margin and bring that uh, threshold up I should say uh, to minus 120 dBm. So we've added a margin just to account for the noise of being in a city, especially the ISM band, which is very noisy. Uh, the receivers at the other end are just going to be six foot uh, with a stock antenna also. The propagation model um, is easy because 915 sits within the sweet spot of the default Longley Rice model. Uh, the reliability, uh, because we're doing packet data, uh, where the an amount of failure is to be expected. Uh, we can afford to bring the reliability down, but again, this is just a small margin that's within this model, so it's not going to make much of a difference. Context off um, and diffraction off because um, diffraction is included in the Longley Rice model already. Okay, clutter. Uh, that's where it gets interesting. You've got three clutter modes. Uh, you could ignore clutter and just use the surface model. In this case, the surface model is pretty good because we've got LiDAR. Uh, for New York. Um, so if you were to set that to hard, um, that would block any signal. And so you get a line of sight map only. Now that's no good for Low Rowan uh, because it penetrates buildings. It's got a very um, low receiver sensitivity, sort of record breaking. And so we need to use um, soft, but then we need to carefully set the clutter attenuation. This will vary by building materials. So a building in New York is different to a stone building in England, is different to uh, a wooden hut somewhere else. So you need to set a value that's relative to your local environment. Now I'd recommend, if you're not sure, just put something light like this in. So we're just going to use a light value. And at least then you will see an impact of the buildings, even if it isn't accurate. It's hard to accurately model a building because you've also got the furniture inside the building so you're better off just picking an arbitrary value and going with it. Okay resolution, uh, there's lots of resolutions you can pick. Uh, don't pick something like two meters. Uh, yes you might get a more accurate map but you'll pay for it because you'll be waiting a long time. Um, the breakpoint in CloudRF is 16 meter or 52 foot resolution uh, because this is where the really high quality data comes into play. And so you also get quite a fast result. So use, use 52 foot in a city. Um, if you're doing a very wide plot out in a rural area, then yeah, you could use something like uh, uh, 200 foot or, or 100 foot resolution. There's a color key for LoRa, and we're going to set a radius of just five miles. It's too optimistic to expect to get 10 miles here in New York. Although you could do if you went and put it on a tall building, as you'll see shortly. So the, this is a... Uh, stock antenna six foot off the ground. So what, what do you think you're going to get? Well, as expected, not very far. Uh, looking at the distance here, uh, we're only really about a mile and we've got some fairly substantial nulls in our coverage here caused by large buildings like at the, the Navy Yard. Right, let's get that uh, 
better antenna on. So we'll go and put on uh, nine DBI antenna. So very expensive, uh, high gain dipole with a squashed pattern. So it's going to be very good for reaching uh, long distance sites, uh, not so good with local sites. And notice the difference. Really not much of a difference. I would say 10 to 20 percent improvement. Okay, so let's go back to the stock antenna. Only this time, let's put it up a pole, 30 foot pole, or on top of a 30 foot building. Okay, better. We've still got some nulls because there's some tall buildings, but now we're reaching Manhattan. And so there's tall buildings over here. If I just flip on the uh, 3D buildings, we'll have a look at what's over here in Manhattan that we're touching. Yeah, so tall buildings. Okay, so as you can see there, antenna gain can only get you so far, especially if you're surrounded by tall buildings. Uh, what really matters is height. You need to get high. And just to prove that, I'm going to go very, very high. So we'll go 300 foot off the ground with a basic 2 dbi stock antenna and there you have it much larger coverage plot uh, right out to the five mile threshold that we set and interestingly at the five mile point uh, hover the mouse here you can see the signal strength we're getting a very strong signal uh, because we've got clear line of sight all the way out there So in summary, height, not antenna, is more important.